I'm a psychiatrist from Malmö, and I'm a colleague of uh, Anders Tingström. We are both from Lund University, and we are also colleagues with Jonas Åkesson and collaborating on ketamine. Um, I will talk, follow up um, the speech by Anders on mechanisms, uh, possible mechanism for this in very interesting antidepressant effect of ketamine. Um, mm -hmm. I pressed a few times, so now I choose to say, help. <laughs> yeah. We know from psychiatry, you're all, there are always friends that will help you in panic, anxiety, so now I feel calm again. Um, I will talk about the clinical use in major depression. And my vision for the future, as stress fusion, is that we get units like this in the ECT units. You are all, I guess, anesthesiologists, and you are very, very familiar with use of anesthesia in connection with electroconvulsive treatment, our gold standard procedure in severe depressive disorder, which can be uh, saving lives. And it's a very efficient method, as Anders said earlier. But we hope that we will add a new intriguing uh, treatment uh, entity uh, and hopefully it will look like this. This is a picture from um, uh, Great Britain uh, where you have patient lying calmly in a nice room close to the ECT unit. Uh, they get intravenous infusion of ketamine in a low dose that is sub-anesthetic. They are taking uh, they get good care and supervision by psychiatry, doctors and nurses. I think it looks quite nice. But I will remind you, anesthesiologists, that we will need you as experts and consultants in close connections to these areas. So I think the realistic vision for the future is that we have units with both ECT and ketamine infusions and that we can uh, use these two entities. But we will see what happens. Um, I have a few questions. The first one is, are new antidepressants needed? And as uh, you heard, Anders, uh, the answer is yes, definitely. Major depressive disorder, MDD, is a very common disease globally. One of the 10 top diseases uh, that uh, the global population suffers most from. 25%, uh, that's one out, of, uh, one out of four, are therapy resistant. That means that although they have tried two different pharmacological antidepressant agents for sufficient time, at least four uh, weeks that is needed, and in a sufficient dose, they are not getting remission. They are still in a depressive state. And this results in a lot of suffering and reduced global function, which is a great global problem. And we also need better suicide prevention. Suicide is the catastrophic end of a se severe depression. Next question, do we have expectations uh, on uh, ketamine? Yes, the expectations are huge. Do we have an agent that is more rapid in action and more effective than SSRI, SNRI, tricyclic, and also perhaps ECT. That would be fantastic. Are the side effects less? 
especially when you give ECT, as Anders mentioned, we have the risk of cognitive loss and memory loss and also autobiographical uh, memory loss. And is this risk less with ketamine? We don't know, but we hope so. And finally, what is the long-term effect of one or several um, treatments with ketamine? Will that, in the long term, reduce the well-known risk for relapse or recurrence into a new episode of depression? Uh, can we decrease that risk? A lot, lot is, uh, we have made a, a dramatic uh, step into the future. Well, what do we know today? It, it started all with Behrman et al. in the year 2000, a report in biological psychiatry. They were the first with a clinical study to report that ketamine could have a rapid effect against depression. They used a low dose, a sub-anesthetic dose. Uh, they infused intravenously for 40 minutes uh, a dose of 0.5 milligram per kilogram body weight, which you know is much less than you uh, use uh, when you want to put people to sleep. They saw the well-known dissociative side effects, uh, but they were over within two hours. And then they observed this immediate antidepressive effect after not more than three to four hours. And they saw a significant effect uh, of ketamine versus placebo, uh, that's saline infusion, within as long as three days, 72 hours. This was a small study, only nine patients that were trying both treatments one week apart. Let's have a look at the data. This is the data from Birman et al. The top line shows the baseline Hamilton depression rating scale data. And in both cases, ketamine or placebo, they had roughly 30 points. And 30 points on the Hamilton scale means that you have a moderate to severe depression. Definitely a clinical depression. There was no, it was a non-significant start of the study. Then after ketamine, compared to placebo, uh, ketamine resulted in a reduction of 14 point compared to placebo, which had an average of zero point reduction, which is quite huge effect. And that was significant, and that was within 72 hours. This was started the interest. Just a few years later, you can read in the evening paper, Aftonbladet, horse medicine helps against depression. It's the biggest that happened since Prozac, the first global SSRI. Uh, I think this was the first time I heard about this. I thought that ketamine, I will never have to pay any attention since the anesthesia course in medical school. But here it came again. Um, and psychiatrist Mats Humble and Jonas Åkesson, who was with us uh, was in this workshop, they became interested. They made a very small study in Malmö, so-called off-label study. And half of the patients responded very rapidly in their depression, became much better, were responders. And this inspired contact with Anders Tingström, also at the workshop, who recruited two very uh, good uh, psychiatry researchers, Puya Movahed and Joachim Ekstrand, who are both here at Lund University. And together with Jonas and myself and others, we designed the KETECT study. I will describe KETECT. But first, I would, we have to say, what is the state today? Should we rewrite the guidelines? Um, 
the Agency for Technical Assessment of uh, SBU made a report this year, 2017, in March. They said, no, we shall not change any guidelines of the present. They concluded that the scientific knowledge today in the literature is limited, few studies, few pa patients, although we have positive results. Studies of repeated infusions with long, uh, with long time follow-up are needed. Studies of bipolar depression are needed. So we can't start and implement this today. We need more research. Are there any possible pitfalls? Definitely. There have been several warnings in the scientific literature that you should not implement uh, ketamine as a standard antidepressant treatment. But, however, however, you can read at the internet. For instance, I have one example here of the New York Ketamine Infusion Clinic. It's an outpatient clinic in uh, Manhattan, and it says that they are medical experts in the use of ketamine for the rapid treatment of depression and chronic pain. Chronic pain I can accept, but de depression, no. But it sounds to the layman that this is already fixed. Get the ketamine dose and get rid of your depression. Do you know who are running this clinic? Two anesthesiologists. Um, well, the pitfalls are, do we know anything about the cognitive side effects? Uh, is there a risk that the uh, dissociation, which can be quite frightening, is switching over to acute psychosis? Is there a risk of switch from depression to mania? Do we have the risk, as you mentioned, about chronic cystitis? If we start to use this as antidepressant, we don't know. And we also know that ketamine is abused in the world for recreational uh, purposes. And um, then we, we call it, I think, the big K. And uh, you can also get into the K-hole. And the question is, if we start to use ketamine in outpatient clinics, is there a risk that we incre increase the risk of abuse? We don't know. I mentioned ketect. What is ketect? This is the study that I, Anders Tingström, Joachim Poya and Jonas working with. This is a naturalistic, open, randomized clinical trial. Uh, it's a non-inferiority study. And we plan to have two pa 200 patients. Uh, we are studying randomizing between a low dose of ketamine, uh, same as Behrman, and we give it three times a week up to a maximum of 12 treatments or we give ECT three times a week, up to 12 treatments. And I can say that uh, the primary endpoint is if the patients go into remission, that is, they are not any longer in clinical uh, depression. And we also follow cognitive effects with a Cantab uh, battery from Cambridge about cognition, and we follow side effects, dissociation, etc. And I will also stress that this study, we follow the patients for one year, two, six, and 12 months to see how they are, if they have any uh, relapse or recurrence. The inclusion criteria are major depressive disorders. They are supposed to have a score on the Madras uh, scale on 20 or higher, which means that they have a moderate or uh, severe depression. Men and women, 18 to 85, yes. This is to be a naturalistic study, but we have some exclusion criteria if they have coercive care, Bipolar depression, psychosis, 
unstable personality syndrome that is unstable, complicated. Severe somatic disease, pregnancy, and active abuse. We have support, nine millions from uh, Vetenskaps Audit, uh, which we are happy to have. And we are also happy to say that we have already included over 120 of the 200 patients. So we are on the run, I would say. Anything else to say? Yes. We also have the, I will give you an international outlook. We have the ELECT-D study. It's not our study. Uh, it's a study conducted by Amit Anand in Cleveland, who is one of the co-authors of the Behrman paper 70 years, 17 years ago. They plan to have 400 patients, and they also randomize between ketamine or ECT. They have started it this year at Yale, Mount Sinai, Cleveland, Houston, and they plan to be complete, complete this in 2022. They have, as I read, support, uh, financial support from P. Corey. Interesting to read about the new organization, the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, which I read is supported by National Institute of Health, the government and other organizations. And um, it's like adding SPU, Socialstyrelsen, Läkemedelsverket, I would guess. They got 100 millions. Uh, so we have to be fast with the Ketek. But of course this is good because we can have... Um, uh, we, we need to rep uh, reproduce our data. And finally, I will skip what Johnson Silag is going to say. The take-home message, Ketek will be back and more research is needed. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, I'm afraid uh, uh, we won't have much time for, uh, for questions. Are there any questions that have popped up? Um, yeah, there are. Uh, Post-cardiac arrest care. Um, we have some very interesting questions here. I'm afraid um, we have been told that we have to... Um, curtail this um, session now, because uh, there's a... Nobel laureate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobel laureate <laughs> coming in. So, um, uh, we'll be available here afterwards, won't yeah, we? I guess so, yes. For a while, Coffee. if yeah. uh, anyone wants to come up and ask us. Um, okay, I was just wondering... Um, has anybody looked into the, 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 the type of dose needed? Uh, has anybody looked into the, how long uh, the effects um, um, last. Stay, last? Yes. I can just say that there are some reports, very small studies, uh, from the infusion, ketamine infusion outpatient clinics. Mm. And there are case reports saying that uh, people feel good and they are offered to have ketamine every second or third week. And some of the patients are coming when they are offered to come after two weeks and say, I still feel good, we can postpone it mm. one or two weeks. And that's good because that is a sign that they don't get hooked on it. Yeah. So um, that, that's what I know so far. Okay. So far. I think the hooking risk is quite small actually. I hope so. But uh, I think it's, it's a good thing, too, that you're really doing the science well, because in the pain field, uh, as I showed, uh, uh, there is so much being done without any proper science, and mm -hmm. it's not really, doesn't advance our knowledge, really. No. No. It's fun to work with it. We do it with Rebro, Halmstad, Helsingborg, Linköping. I think I remembered all. So some people of you are maybe at those sites, psychiatrists and anesthesiologists collaborate in the Ketik study on this. We'll be back. Hmm? Thank you. Thank you for coming. And thank you, Mats and Anders. <laughs>